I'm Kieran Clare from Australian Property Investor Magazine and we're here today talking with Bernard Salt, KPMG partner and demographer about Australian property in 2015. Thanks for joining us here today, Bernard. 2014, how did real estate play out in Australia and were there any surprises? Well, there's always a surprise, I suppose, but um, the market I felt was really quite strong. We had strong population growth, so strong levels of demand. Uh, across Australia and lower interest rates, so that uh, really peaked interest. I think we have a whole heap of Generation Ys sitting at home in mum and dad's place, uh, just waiting for prices to reduce to, uh, to the right level or for the right product to come along. Uh, so I'm actually quite positive about where the market has been and its short-term prospects, not right across the board, uh, I certainly see Melbourne as red hot at the moment. I'm a Melbourneian. It doesn't seem like I can open a paper any morning and there's yet another apartment building. Um, Sydney, of course, is running hot, uh, largely because on the back of uh, the overseas interest. Uh, Brisbane, I think, is doing quite well uh, at the moment, certainly around West End, Woolloongabba, Tenerife, that inner suburban market, but also the outer suburbs. Perth, I think, is a little soft at the moment, and that's to be expected with a downturn in uh, the price of iron ore and the, um, the resources boom coming off the boil. Now, Brisbane had a pretty good year last year, maybe not as strong as some people expected. How will 2015 play out compared to 2014? I actually do think that Brisbane uh, will perform better in 2015 than 2014. I think the economy will pick up. Uh, the uh, dollar is now at 80 cents. It was at $1.10. At $1.10, overseas visitors don't come to Australia. They don't go to Queensland. That does not drive the tourism industry. We have had a fall in interest rates and a fall in petrol prices. That puts more money into the average Australian's kick, if you like, and therefore domestic tourism would also prosper uh, as a consequence. So you put those two factors together, uh, plus the change of government, um, you know, might be um, some projects that, uh, that might start to um, un unfold and uh, inject some life into the Queensland economy. I get it about uh, depressed coal prices and so forth, but uh, Queensland is far more than just the coal industry. So I, I'm actually quite positive about where Queensland and Brisbane is at at the moment. You have a fairly bullish sentiment about the Sydney market this year. There's many out there who feel that it's overheated. What are your thoughts? I think that you could ask uh, analysts at any time in history over the last 20 years, and they'd say, oh, we're a little concerned. <laughs> the market's overheated. Everyone always says the market's overheated. Look, um, th there is no doubt that uh, Sydney has performed well, um, but I actually see it going further on the back of lower interest rates, um, on the back of strong population growth, which will come through the, um, uh, through the capital city of, uh, of, of Sydney. Uh, and I also think that the Chinese flow will continue. Uh, the logic of having a bolt hole uh, in the safe, secure global city of Sydney, an overnight flight uh, away from Shanghai or wherever, I think will, uh, will continue to drive that market further. Looking at Melbourne in 2015, you're quite positive, but you do have a vested interest. <laughs> I, do, I do have a vested interest, I do have an investment property in, uh, in Melbourne. Um, but uh, if you look at the demographics, uh, especially the inner city, generally Melbourne's inner city, the three municipalities that make up the inner city, Melbourne, uh, Port Phillip and Yarra, generally those municipalities add about seven or 8,000 people per year, maybe 5,000 apartments. Over the last 12 months, or 12 months prior to the last 12 months, it wasn't 8,000, it was 16,000. So the rate of growth has doubled. I actually think what Melbourne is doing is catching up to Sydney. Sydney was a global city, and it sort of left, um, you know, sort of dull suburban Melbourne behind there. But Melbourne is actually uh, catching up in density and in terms of the quality of uh, property that is on offer. So it's more than just demand. There's a structural shift, I think, that's taking place at, in Melbourne at the moment. Now, last year, Bernard, when we talked to you, quite correctly picked that Perth's market would consolidate. Why do you think that happened? And what are your thoughts on how 2015 will play out in that city? Well, I think that the Perth market is uh, almost entirely driven by overseas migration uh, and not by internal migration. People from the eastern seaboard simply do not travel west. Uh, the Nullarbor Plain is a little bit like the Berlin Wall. It stops people from the east getting into the west. Uh, but if the overseas level of immigration to Australia and particularly into Perth slows down, largely on the back of uh, a weaker demand for labour, 
caused by the coming off the boil of the resources boom, uh, then that plays out in the demand for property in Perth, and that is still subsiding. So it was subsiding throughout 2014, I think it will continue to subside in 2015, and hopefully it'll settle somewhere in uh, 2016 and plateau along there for a while. Finally, a topic that's no doubt close to your heart as a demographer, the demise of the census. The demise of the census, yes, this has come out of left field just this week. Uh, it's been announced that uh, there are serious considerations as to whether we will maintain the census. Now, I'm calling on all demographers and all data nerds out there to rise up as one and say, don't touch our census. Every five years since 1961, we have had a census. Uh, the, the continuity of that, this is a demographic dip, dip, dipstick that we put into the na nation and see how we've changed. It's a social barometer. It's a, it's a demographic museum of Australia. You can't just change the timing. Uh, as for getting rid of it altogether, well, the, demo the census is the bedrock. Uh, in planning disputes, uh, if, you, if you're uh, presenting a case to, uh, to a planning court, for example, if you say, well, here is the population according to the census, there is no dispute. A fact is a fact. If you say, here is the population according to a survey, well, who conducted the survey? How representative is it? Who, um, is it reliable? Uh, so a census is a fact. And I think that it delivers a certainty to investment decision making by both the public and the private sector. So um, uh, please leave our census alone. Entertaining and informative as always, Bernard. Thanks very much for your time today. My pleasure. Thank you.